Money wins. You're corrupt, and so is the world. You were only with me to get to power. Ah, oh, their whole relationship is such a disaster. My name is Douglas Bonaparte. I'm a certified financial planner. Today, I'm gonna break down the finances of the characters in the show Secession. I was just talking to my mom. It's a great scene. And she said, apparently he'll leave me five million anyway. So I'm golden, baby. It's actually a very bad financial planning concept to think that there's going to be a windfall in the future when you really don't have an idea as to when, how much, or having any control over that whatsoever. You can't do anything with five, Greg. Five's a nightmare. This is the best part. Is it? Oh yeah. Oh. Can't retire. Not worth it to work. Now let's say Greg inherits $5 million today. Generally speaking, inheritance from family members or anyone from that matter is received tax free. Well, how much can Greg live on without running out of money? The 3% rule is a convenient rule of thumb because it demonstrates what we could at least get out of a sum of money by investing it prudently. So 3% of $5 million would give Greg about $150,000 a year. Now, that's a pretty good living by anyone's standard, but he's sitting in his great uncle's $63 million penthouse on Fifth Avenue, and he appears to be drinking a bottle of Blanton single barrel. If this is the lifestyle that Greg has become accustomed to, $5 million isn't going to cut it. Great, do you think we could figure this out? You wanna transfer now? It's 40K. Here's the thing, if that's a stainless steel Submariner, nowhere near $40,000. But what about watches being a good investment? Yes, there are some watches out there that do appreciate in value over time. Will Greg make out well with his $40,000 investment in this watch? Time will tell, but you'll probably do better investing in the US stock market. If I try to say the truth. My favorite interaction between the two of them, I think, period. So I love this one. All my life, I've been thinking a little bit about money. In the scene where Tom tells Shiv that he often thinks about money, he's really laying out his financial background. We know his mother is a highly respected attorney in the Twin Cities. And a job like that probably earns anywhere from $180,000 to $250,000 a year. Far cry from billionaire status. Mm. Well, this is delicious. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm very glad you like it because it cost a pretty penny. This whole scene is a great way of showing the disparity between the backgrounds that both Shiv and Tom come from. If you're wondering what the venue costs where Tom and Shiv are getting married, well, we looked it up. It's about $19,000 for two days. It's massive. Logan owns this castle and therefore has to not only maintain it, but upkeep it. We see a scene in a room. We got priceless pieces of art. We can only begin to imagine how much this castle actually costs. Come on, there's nothing wrong with his body, it's just suits. Is he wearing a suit in that scene? You look like a divorce attorney from the Twin Cities. I don't put it past Tom to spend some money on a suit. He says he really likes his suit. Maybe spent $600 to $1,000, had it tailored. Looks good. For most people, that's an expensive suit. We see Tom upgrade his career into becoming the head of ATN, where he should have no issues affording any type of suit that he wants. Custom, off the rack, designer, whatever it may be. It's a really, really nice place. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, who'll get to keep it in the divorce? <laughs> so in season four, we learn that Tom and Shiv may get divorced. It brings up a great question. How are the assets going to be divided? So when we think about the assets in most people's lives that could get split up during divorce, it comes down to things like their retirement accounts, checking accounts, and the family home. We have a feeling that they live in lower Manhattan in an apartment that costs at least $5.8 million. If Tom and Shiv do get divorced, a prenup, which we know Tom likely has signed, comes into play. And that will spell out exactly what he does or does not get. She says that the prenup is a little uh, unconscionable. Whoa, hold, hold it. That means it has to be so bad and so not in Tom's favor for a lawyer to use that term. But uh, she did notice that re-infidelities, uh, there's no uh, yeah, clause. Yeah, we don't need to do that. It is common to see infidelity clauses in prenups, but whether two people should enter into a prenup, that's really about what's right for them. You want to have a sense of how they value money, what possessions or assets that they have are truly theirs. All the top attorneys are conflicted out. Conflicted out means that there's a conflict of interest with that attorney representing her. Spending a lot of money on an attorney doesn't always guarantee good results, but 
look, you usually get what you pay for here. I can't help but to have this feeling that Shiv will be okay. And it's really Tom that's going to be, you know, working hard to figure out what he's entitled to, if anything at all. I'm one of the executors of your dad's affairs. In season four, Logan's death is the main event that ultimately sets off the name of the show, Secession. And it appears at a certain point, undated, it was suggested that it was your dad's wish that okay. Kendall take over as CEO. Okay, so classic, there's a codicil here. That's an amendment to a will or a legal document. This is actually pretty common. He underlined recently. Underlined or crossed out? This only emphasizes the need to have clear communication with those you're putting in charge of handling your estate. To ensure that this doesn't happen to you, it's probably good form to make sure that all estate planning documents are in one place. And if you are working on any changes, to communicate what those potential changes might be so you don't catch anyone off guard like Logan here clearly is. What else is in the... Can you, I don't want to... Music, burial in the city, Catholic. We're not just talking about assets, the things that you own. We're also talking about children. And for more advanced estate planning cases, you have trusts or trust being born out of the will. He's got like a kind of like investment impressionisms, right? Like he's got uh, three Gauguins, no one's seen for tax reasons. So. And then you hear about three Gauguin paintings and those paintings can fetch more than a hundred million dollars. So what's the tax planning around this? Likely so that those assets are excluded from the estate, that there would not need to be estate tax paid on that. Generally speaking, it's never a bad idea to have your basic estate planning documents in place. This is your last will and testament, powers of attorney, healthcare proxy, and a living will. Here in the show, we really do get our first glimpse at what Kendall might actually be worth. Most of these shares probably have a very low basis, meaning they were gifted a long time ago, which means a significant portion of that sale is going to be capital gains. You might as well take about a third of that gain off the table for the tax man. So in this scene, we have Kendall going to an investor meeting and unboxing a pair of sneakers from Longfall. And he wants to show off that he's got great style walking into a meeting. Now, I'm under the impression that Kendall is spending his own money to look the part. Some could argue, is he taking a deduction to wear these clothes because it has something to do with work? Now, typically that's reserved for uniforms. I wouldn't go quite calling a pair of Longfall sneakers a uniform. However, computers, transportation, meals and expenses, wages, these are all very, very typical things that get written off as part of deductions. In this scene, you get a really good look at how the Roy family, in this case, Kendall, likes to travel. This helicopter company can take you from Manhattan to the Hamptons for about $4,000 plus taxes, which if you are asking the question, is that deductible? Probably. So when it comes to deducting expenses for business purposes, there's usually not a limit on the quality of things, but there are certain thresholds, percentage of income or revenue that would create what's called an audit risk. And while Roman might not be visibly as fancy as his brother Kendall, he clearly too likes to travel in style and comfort on his private jet costing about $16,000 an hour to charter. And we see Roman pull up in two Chevy Suburbans, which would run about $800 a day to rent in Manhattan. Logan created this empire, and he clearly was set out to leave this to his children. But his children are so affected that he might not actually get to see his own wishes for them be carried out. And this is all very typical in situations where we're talking about business enterprises being passed down through family members.